Well, Fannie Willis is back in the hot seat. She's the Fulton County District Attorney who is prosecuting former President Trump in Georgia for his alleged election interference there. But while former President Trump is dealing with his legal case up in New York, back in Georgia, all eyes are on Willis. A Senate committee resumed its investigation into Willis's relationship with a special prosecutor she hired in the case. The Senate is looking into allegations of misconduct, potential conflicts of interest, and alleged misuse of public funds. We'll get back to Fannie Willis in a moment, but you know public figures like Fannie are always intriguing to watch, but it's especially enlightening when you have the behavior panel analyzing them. The world's top body language experts, Scott Rouse, Mark Bowden, Chase Hughes, and Greg Hartley join me now. And they have their own show, The Behavior Panel, here on Merritt Street. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks Thanks for having us. Us. So yeah. great to have you guys yeah. here. So, Scott, break down the type of work that you do and why you decided to make a show about it. Well, I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And what we decided to do is when we came together as a behavior panel, COVID had just hit. Mm. So we were bored in the house like everybody else was. <laughs> And from talking back and forth, we were saying, oh, let's do a video. And the other one said, let's do a video. So I put together a little video for the guys and sent out and said, let's all do a video. We chose um, the Tiger King to do. We oh. talk, so we talked about the, did a video, talked about the Tiger King and broke it down and put the video up and it sort of blew up for us. And it's just been growing from there. Yeah, Amazing. So, sure. yeah. so Greg, what most of us know about body language barely scratches the surface. What are some of the common misconceptions? Yes, yeah, so I think most of us learn body language in high school psychology where they tell you if you cross your arms, it means this. If you lick your lips, it means that. And those are all what we would call absolutes. An absolute means that if I do something, it means something else. But humans are really complex and we will string together pieces of body language to create our own kind of sentence structure. So things like, I touch my nose, it means I'm lying. I look this way, it means I'm lying. Any of that, don't believe it. When a person tells you somebody's lying from one action, you should be concerned. We look for clusters and build up and change from a baseline. That's the difference between a good body language person and somebody who read it in a book and came out. Okay, so I know you guys count eight, um, eye blinks. I just want you to know when I have fake eyelashes on, <laughs> my baseline really changes. So take that into account. Yeah, right. it's okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. District Attorney Fonnie Willis. She's the prosecutor in the Trump election interference case in Georgia. But recently, her credibility became the focus. Is there um, something you didn't understand? No, I just wanted to make sure that, that okay. you did not have a meeting with him in the conference room. So um, you and Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at a conference? That is correct. And I think in one of your motions, you tried to implicate and slept with him at that conference, which I find to be extremely offensive. Or it's highly offensive when someone lies on you, and it's highly offensive when they try to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them, and I take exception to it. So, Scott, there is a lot going on in this testimony. The judge overseeing this hearing even called it unprofessional in his ruling. So what do you see in her demeanor? This is a treasure trove of body language cues and tells that come in clusters that would suggest she's being deceptive. Mm. For example, we see her blink rate, like you mentioned a second ago, goes up at certain times that let us know her stress level's going up. We see her breathing rate go up a lot and it calms down a lot in places where she feels relaxed. But when her stress level goes up, we can spot it instantly. She does things like compressed lips or, or what I call stress mouth. When you do that and your lips disappear, and because when your lips disappear, there's an issue near. That lets you know yeah. something's up with that. And, and we, we see a lot of, of these single shoulder shrugs. By themselves, they mean nothing. But when you see those at the right place with some of these other things we're talking about as far as body language cues of deception go or what we consider deception, that's when you look at it and say something's probably up here. This was a classic. Every, every clip you see of her shows numerous cues of deception. Now, I noticed, I mean, she's clearly angry, frustrated, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, rightfully so, I think, because she's being accused. Does that change your analysis of those cues? Well, for sure, for me, that is the number one thing I noticed. She's almost enraged when she's talking. So when we say fight or flight, we're going to measure things like blink rate. We're going to measure mucous membranes drying. Both of those will cause it to happen. So it skews a bit. So what we have to look for is a baseline when she's angry. I often say there's no baseline when you're sitting at home on the couch eating Cheetos. We're talking about when you're on the stand, the baseline there and the deviation. What we do find in her are three big deviations from even that angry baseline hmm. when you start to push her for receipts, for information, and you get down to nitty gritty details. Well, gentlemen, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for all your great insight. And you can catch the behavior panel here 
on Merritt Street.